Resolution 1618 and the events that its adoption have set into motion, namely this Istanbul process, pose a major threat to freedom of expression and freedom of speech as we understand those concepts currently in the United States. For over a decade, the Organization of the Islamic Conference, now the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, has pushed to criminalize so-called defamation of Islam. Now, it's been variously called vilification of religions and defamation of religions over the years, but its goal has basically remained the same, and that is to place limits on expression that the OIC deems critical of or offensive to Islam or Muslims. And it's, it's using a rather thinly shelled uh, version of what constitutes offensive to boot. In April of 2011, when Resolution 1618 was introduced into the Human Rights Council, sans this odious term, defamation of religions, it was seen by many as a significant victory, <clears throat> both a defeat of the concept and a victory against the OIC in its years-long campaign to impose its version, its concept of freedom of speech and expression on the rest of the world. It was described by some as a major step forward, as a substantive, not merely tactical victory, and even as the laying to rest of that odious concept. <clears throat> and while I have a tremendous amount of respect for those who have fought the OIC for these many years, and I say the following with no lack of deference to them, I must disagree completely with that assessment. Resolution 1618 was not a defeat of the concept of defamation of religions. To the contrary, that concept lives on today. Nor was Resolution 1618 a victory in the battle to define the proper scope, in the battle against the OIC to define this proper scope of freedom of expression. <clears throat> Again, to the contrary, we are in a worse position today in the battle to preserve freedom of speech and expression than we were when the term defamation of religions polluted innumerable de UN debates, documents, and resolutions. On this first point, that the defamation of religions concept is not dead. <clears throat> no sooner had Resolution 1618 been adopted than it was reported that diplomats in Muslim communities, Muslim countries were threatening to resurrect the concept. And then in August of 2011, the IINA, which is the news organ of the Organization of Islamic Con uh, Cooperation, reported in Washington, uh, reported that Washington would host a meeting to discuss with the OIC, quote, how to implement Resolution 1618 on combating defamation of religions. And that the aim of this and further meetings was developing a legal basis for domestic and international laws, again, preventing inciting hatred resulting from the continued defamation of religions. So the concept and the goal are not dead. Now to the point that we're worse off today than before Resolution 1618 was adopted. If you, have, if you think you've vanquished your enemy, when in reality he's merely regrouping to attack you from a different angle, you have severely weakened the defense of your position. And that's effectively what we've done. As we celebrate the victory over the defeat of defamation of religions, which, as we've seen, is not dead, the OIC is going, going full steam ahead with it. And no matter what it's called, whether it's pushed as a, a hate speech concept, the goal, again, is the same, to restrict expression on the OIC's terms. A second way in which we're weaker today is that by making what amounts to little more than a cosmetic change to the wording of the resolution, we have lost key allies in the fight to resist the OIC's efforts to restrict spe free speech. How so? Well, our European allies um, and some others in the human rights community who were able, were able to recognize that defamation of religions was a problematic concept, um, one that some have described as turning the human rights paradigm on its head by attaching rights to an idea as opposed to attaching them to individuals. And so they were able to rally against it. Unfortunately, uh, they have not achieved the same level of clarity with respect to hate speech laws. I think that all of our European allies have some version of hate speech provisions on their books. And since the remaining portions of Resolution 1618 track ICCPR language, uh, Article uh, 20 language, and bear a striking resemblance to some of the hate speech provisions that we've seen in Europe, our allies had little problem supporting it. And really, who could blame them, given that we were supporting it too? But as we've seen, through the proliferation of hate speech prosecutions throughout Europe, Geert Wilders, Lars Hedegaard, 
Elizabeth Sabotish Wolf, just to name a few, these hate speech laws make pretty effective proxies for defamation of religion's provisions. And so, with a wording change, we've lost allies in the resistance, and we've opened a clear alternative path for the OIC to achieve the same end. And America is basically alone at this point in resisting hate speech laws. That is, if, if this administration needs to resist it at all, and that remains to be seen. <clears throat> Another way in which we are weaker today is that in exchange for the OIC's ostensible concession of dropping defamation of religions, the West has offered up some concessions of its own. And remember, I don't think this is a concession at all. I think we're giving them something for nothing. It's earned them the praise of the Secretary of State who applauded the OIC and complimented the Secretary General on the OIC, OIC team's work in Geneva. We've also handed them the West's and specifically the United States buy-in to this, this awful resolution, which is a, a PR coup for the OIC, and they're already making use of it. They're describing what we did in April as a concession, not the other way around. And we have invited the OIC as equals to a series of closed door meetings, this so-called Istanbul process, to discuss, discuss measures on how to implement this resolution. And I want to stress that word. It's about implementing, putting into practice what that resolution says. Now, that would have been a really terrible idea, even if the resolution were actually about combating religious intolerance, as it says it is. Uh, some key OIC member states aren't exactly champions of freedom in that department. And, but the problem here is that to the extent that 1618 has anything to do with freedom of expression, and it does by its plain language, don't take my word for it, read it for yourself, it is even more preposterous to invite the OIC to this discussion after this years-long campaign that they have had against freedom of expression. To be frank, the United States does not need any guidance or input from the OIC on setting, legally, culturally, or otherwise, the acceptable boundaries of freedom of expression here. The OIC has absolutely nothing positive to offer us. Further, any compromise between our and the OIC's position on what should be the acceptable boundaries of freedom of expression would necessarily lead to an erosion of one of our most essential and cherished freedoms. Yet, the current administration has given the OIC an open invitation to sessions in DC and an offer to work together on implementing this resolution. And so today, I think we are in a worse position with respect to protecting our rights from the onslaught of the OIC. And far from being even a qualified victory, I think that resolution 1618 is at best an unqualified failure. So the next steps for us are to determine what we do back, uh, do next and how we can regain some of the ground that we've lost. Thank you.